Are you tired of just being another beginner project manager lost in the crowd? What if I told you there was a way to become a magnetic project manager that your team and stakeholders definitely can't ignore, deny, or refuse? And how would it feel to have your team look up to you, trust you, and perform as you perform at your best with regard to exceptional leadership? Now, you're going to want to stick around for today's episode because I'm going to reveal some secrets to becoming a magnetic project manager that they have to listen to, that they have to understand from, that they, you get where I'm going. Today's episode should be impactful, family. I'm going to get jump right into it if you haven't. Some of these things may or may not know I'm just playing. You can check this out in the book here, The Magnetic Project Manager. I will leave a link below so you can find out more. I'm going to touch on some. These are not even, these are some of the things I've just thought of along my journey that I'm when I'm, I'm going to create a version two of this book. So you're definitely going to want to check that out. But you really want to pick up version one because uh, it's going to be worth your time. But check this out. I, I got a quote here, family. When people go looking for excuses and reasons, you go looking for results and outcome, Edward Cope Jr. Yes, I had to put that there, family, because a lot of times we can find ourselves getting caught up in the excuses. We can get find ourselves getting caught up in what people are saying externally to us that pours inside of us internally, and then we get lost. We get lost because we believe we can't do it. So that's why we're going to jump in right into point number one. Point number one is challenge your limited beliefs. Watch this, family. Sometimes we all like to put a period instead of putting a comma of the things that we can achieve. Okay, ED, you like, oh, now you're trying to get super smart on us and everything. No, family, if you ever paid attention, if you ever looked at grammar, anytime you put a period of, uh, behind a sentence, that means that sentence is over. We are starting a new period. But when we put a comma, a comma just basically says, yes, that may be over behind us, but there is more to come. Oh, I like that, family, because we have to challenge our limited beliefs as project managers. There's going to be a lot of times where you're going to be tasked with a project and you're going to believe I can't do it, especially my newbies, because this is for you today. You're going to be tasked with a project one day because maybe you made the transition from project coordinator to project manager. And now as the project manager, before you were in the passenger seat and now you are actually driving the vehicle and you're like, I don't know what I need to do, but you need to trust yourself, family. You need to trust yourself because you're watching and listening to episodes like this, you need to trust yourself because there's material out there like this book here, The Magnetic Project Manager. There is things out there that if you take the time to really invest and really trust yourself and then enjoy the opportunity of breaking these limited beliefs of what people said outside of you. Now, I'm going to touch on all of this, family, and this is going to be different. I promise you today's episode is definitely different than whatever you ever heard out there about Hey, as a beginner project manager, these, I'm not going to go into all that because today I need to tackle, I need to challenge your mindset as well as your belief set, if that makes any sense to you. Let's move on to point number two. Improve your, your facilitation skills. This is a skill set that you definitely want to improve on. This is not something that happens overnight. This is one of the things when you create, when you are a good facilitator, when you are in meetings and when people are trying to over talk each other, you can have the ability to go, let me put this person on mute or let me put this person on mute and really finding different ways. I always said that I was going to do, I think I'm going to do the six thinking hats. I really want to do a full visual of that because it's been a while since I've even tapped into that, but using a, a technique like the six thinking hat hats method to facilitate a more productive brainstorming session or just basically when you're in a meeting leading a meeting you want to make sure those individuals that may not feel it's not that they're let's just call it what it is they're shy what they call technically an introvert but if you get them talking if you start asking them probing questions and these are techniques that i learned along the way you can't assume that just because no one is, is speaking up or talking that they don't have anything to add. I've had it where people would actually uh, ping me in chat or a Slack and say, hey, this is what I was thinking. So I said, okay, this is what we're gonna do. When we're in a meeting, those like myself that are very talkative, I let them talk. And then I go to the individuals and some, and a lot of times for me, I'll flip-flop that. Like I, if I know someone on the team is a very like 
shy and introverted, I'll ask them, and you will be amazed some of the brainstorming or when you're leading a meeting on a project, the input that they have to the project. So you have to, that's why it's important, again, building these relationships with your project team, as well as building relationships with stakeholders. Let's move on to point number three. Don't go into this alone. Again, don't go into this alone. Family, a lot of times people don't want to pay for mentoring and coaching. They're like, why would I invest $200 or $300 or $100 or whatever the number is that coach or mentor is showing you and what you don't realize is that mentor and that coach is really showing you the shortcut. I, as someone that has been in this industry for 10 plus years, more than a decade, have a coach and a mentor that I meet with every Saturday, no days off every Saturday around leadership, around development as personal development. Why do I invest or why do I work with a mentor or coach like that? Because I realize that the value, I am more concerned with the value as I'm not more, and I'm not paying attention to the investment, the value, what value am I get, uh, getting out of this? How can I grow and learn uh, from this situation. So it's important, family, that you make that investment in a mentor because all they can do is help accelerate your professional growth. Now, I know there are some very horrible mentors and coaches out there. I'm very full, I'm fully aware of it because I've experienced some of them. However, if you have someone that is in your field, in your niche, that what you're doing, which it seems like you're, since you're here today, it must mean that you're, you're interested in project management or you're already in project management. You need to work with someone that is already doing something or going somewhere that you've already, that you would like to go because they've been there. If they have more than a decade of experience, then that lets you know, they may not know everything, but they know more than you, as Kobe would say. Let's move on to point number four. Develop meeting recap writing strategies. Again, like I said, family, I was going to talk about the mindset a lot here, but I'm also going to talk about some soft skills. A lot of, you won't hear this a lot. People won't tell, because they'll tell you, you need to have strong writing skills. I don't know. Yes, but maybe, I don't know. I don't really agree with that. I think you have to have a writing skill set in which where you can take a bunch of information and categorize it in a way that is readable to the end user and making sure that you get the most necessary points in there. And this is teachable. This is a teachable skill. This is not like you writing a, a paper in college or writing a, a long form email. No, you need to figure out where just imagine if someone gave you some information, which way it would be easier if I put it in more of a paragraph format or a bullet point format? Leave your comment. I would love to see what you think about that. But again, having the ability to really develop your writing skills. And again, this takes practice. And I hear AI in my ear, Ellen Iverson said, we talking about practice. Yes, uh, AI, we are talking about practice, but developing the ability to really document and write a clear, concise sentence is going to be key, but when I say clear, concise, I mean being able to take information and bullet point it, being able to put the information on a PowerPoint slide and deliver that information. Let's move on to point number five. Handle conflict with grace. Now, I will be honest with you, family. I'm always transparent with you. I have my moments where I handle it with grace. And then sometimes I handle it like I wish you would. Okay, I'm sorry, sorry, you didn't ask for all that. But no, seriously, family, I really, you do need to learn how to, and it's, again, this is over time. And I keep saying that over time because this is not a quick fix. I'm not going to tell you that you can get rich in 22 hours and six minutes. No, this is a craft that it takes time to learn. But the good thing about it is you're already a step ahead of most project managers because what ends up happening is they don't invest that time. They don't take the time to hone their craft and practice the basics. These are the things that we're talking about. Even though they're basics, they're, there's an opportunity to grow from the basis, and this is why this is for you. So handle conflict with grace. Being able to maintain, because you want to maintain a team harmony, and sometimes team harmony means I need to get something off my chest. I didn't like the way Bob said what he said, and I need to let him know. And sometimes you need to let that go, and then other times you need to step in because you're going to see that it's going to escalate to a point where you won't be able to bring the team back in a cohesive manner. Let's move on to point number six, manage time effectively and efficiently. Again, manage this message. Let me tell you why this is, is key. As a project manager, 
You have to manage your time effectively because you are constantly in and out of meetings. You are constantly answering me uh, emails. You're constantly getting calls and you need to find ways to block your calendar off so you can focus on if you need to get meeting recaps out, if you need to talk with maybe you had a conflict and you need to schedule a meeting, but you need to block this off to make sure that no one tries to pull you into a meeting or anything of that nature. So again, learn how to manage time. I'm, I'm really thinking about doing a whole series on time management because it's also going to help me as well as a reminder, some of the things I take for granted that I leverage when it comes to time management. Because one thing, again, you are the coach, you are the captain of this ship. And so when you're leading a project, you're responsible for ensuring you're holding everyone accountable at the same time. You need to hold yourself accountable as well. Let's move on to point number seven. Encourage project teams to foster a collaborative environment. If you listen to any of the episodes so far, if you ever paid attention to anything that I've ever said, the only way, and I don't believe in there's any other way, and maybe it is, you're going to have to tell me, but when you really want to have an effective, efficient project, where you want to be, when you want to win and have success and stand within those triple constraints, again, cost, schedule, quality, scope, if you want to make sure these are good, you have to be able to have a collaborative in environment. So point number seven, again, is encourage project teams to foster a collaborative environment. When you do this, when there is a problem comes up, John doesn't go and take the problem and go, in, and, and go into a silo or go into his little room and solve it on himself. No, we all come together and pitch in because there may be something that John is not seeing because he's too close to the problem that we may be able to suggest and then he'll, he, he'll have a aha moment and then all of a sudden we're off to the races. So again, using collaborative tools like mind mapping or co-creation sessions are going to be key. Let's move on to point number eight. Enjoy your journey of going at becoming a project manager or being in this profession that I love, that I hope you fall in love with called project management. I always been, I've been stating through all these various points, family, this will not happen overnight. You will have to be, you have to be willing to make the commitment. You have to be willing to put in the time that's necessary in order to achieve what you said you wanted. I didn't ask you for this. You asked for it. You said you wanted this career and this thing that I love that I hope you fall in love with called project management because it's worth it. Because the skill sets that you learn here is a transferable skill set, meaning if you no longer wanted to be in project management and you made a decision, not a choice, but a decision to say, hey, I think I want to go be a CEO of a company. I think I want to be a CFO. I think I want to just go be a, a CIO. These are opportunities, again, but it's over time to build these skill set and to actually happen uh, for you to grow. I have two bonuses for you, family, and then I'll let you, and then I'll give you my closing remarks and I'm on my way. First bonus, manage internal conflict. A lot of times, as I was talking about on the very first point about the limited beliefs, I also want to address here making sure that you stop having these self-negative talks up to yourself. It's already bad enough when externally people have comments and feedback allegedly to give you, but then when you let that get inside of you and you start believing it, saying that maybe all everything that they said was wrong, but I'm saying everything that they said is not right. Mm, I like that because the reason why I like that family is because when you think about it is that you have to be willing to take feedback, but then do something with the feedback in a constructive manner where you're not allowing it to get inside of you, where you start t telling yourself, hey, you know what, maybe I'm not good enough to do this. This thing called project management, how can I ever get into project management? I don't have any experience. And you start creating all of these stories that are irrelevant to what you want out of life as far as a career in this thing called project management. So I'm asking of you, I am pleading with you don't fall into the trap of self-negative talk because all it can do, it won't benefit you. It won't help you. Trust me. I'm, all, I'm not telling you. See, this is the thing about this family. The, you know what separates me from um, a lot of people that do this type of content is that I am actually, I live this. Like I live and breathe this. And because I live and breathe this, there's things that, you know, I wish somebody would have talked about the mindset of project management. I wish someone would have talked more in detail about the skill set about project management. And I'm doing that for you because when you have the mindset, when you walk in there being confident that I can lead this project and you may be scared, you may be nervous, you may be fearful, but on the exterior, they're like, oh, he's, 
he or she is very confident. Hey, let's we, we, we want to follow you. And that's what you need. You may need to start off afraid, but eventually you're going to you're going to you're going to learn so much that over time you're going to look back at your old self and say, why was I? Why? I'm glad I, I didn't allow that self negative talk to get inside me and that I trust my I trusted the journey so much that I didn't fall short. And then when I did fall short, I was willing to pick myself up and learn again. Let's move on to the um, last and final bonus. And that is implement a effective knowledge management. I always recommend that you always, you start personally, like from even building your own personal learnings that you've learned from various projects. What I used to do and I'm, and, and I'm still doing it to this day is documenting things that I've learned from a particular project. And it's not anything about the actual project details. It's a more, for instance, there was a, a situation where during the lessons learned uh, review, I was getting feedback of saying, hey, we just had, it was just too many meetings and it, it took away from them doing the work. Gotcha. Documented that. I said, okay, next time I need to make sure that we don't have so many meetings to allow the project team to actually do what they came to do, which was work on the work. All right, family, let me give you my three closing remarks and then I'll let you go. Thank you for uh, being here because I really, truly believe this type of content is really going to change your life today. If it doesn't, it's at least going to have some type of impact or influence in it. Point number one, challenge your, your limited belief. I understand that you may be nervous. You're leading your first project. I may I understand that maybe you don't even have the experience to get into project management. I understand that you're currently a project coordinator or a business analyst or you're doing some other job and you're trying to figure your way in. I just want to let you know when you do get in here, I want you to understand that it's important to challenge your limited beliefs. Stop believing that you can't do this. I'm telling you that you can. It's up to you. Even though I'm saying that you can, you have to be willing to do the work. You have to be willing to do this, make the necessary sacrifices so you will be able to develop the confidence and the courage to lead projects effectively. Point number two, as I always say, do not go into this alone. Hire you a mentor, hire you a coach for the direction you're trying to go. If you're trying to get your PMP or your CAPM, or if you're just trying to learn in the real world, how do I lead a project? Where should I start? What should I start doing? How can those type of questions your mentor and your coach should be answered? And the last and final point, enjoy the journey in developing your project management skills. I understand that you want to get to be an APMP, a program manager, a portfolio. I understand all these things, but can you enjoy what you're doing and, and enjoy the learning and enjoy the opportunity of learning what you did well and what some of your strengths and how can you work on some of your weaknesses while at the same time working on your strengths? So enjoy the journey, family. I go by the name of ED. I am so grateful and thankful that you allowed me to deliver today's episode. Until next time, I'm out.